Hello, this is Sheldon Heitner, and we're at Link Paris 2018, and I have the pleasure to have with me today Professor Tommy Anderson from Sweden and from Belgium, who gave an interesting presentation earlier today on first pass rate, best option. Well, let's ask Professor Anderson to speak a little about that right now. Thank you for being with us. I understand you were speaking about first pass, uh, the first pass rate as our best option. Do you want to explain a little bit about what that means? With that, we mean that the first attempt you do when you do a, a thrombectomy, when the patient has a, has a stroke, is always the best. And there's many reasons for that. Uh, one reason is obviously that this, the quicker you can remove it, the quicker you can restore the blood flow, the better for the patient, because that's why he or she is suffering. But also the fact that with every attempt, this tiny clot becomes more difficult to retrieve because it becomes compacted, increased friction, and the second time is more difficult than the first. The third is more difficult than the second. So the first attempt that you do, it's very important to, if you can be successful in that attempt. Do we understand enough now about the nature of the clot that we're able to approach? Them? Yes and no, we, we're learning more and more. I think uh, the, from the work from um, Nuravi, uh, now uh, Serenovus has done, is actually to take the, the clot composition and make it, turn it into kind of a science. Realizing that the clots are not the same all the time, they are different depending on where they come from, if they come from the carotid, if they come from the heart, or if they are actually sometimes uh, they're growing on site, so to speak. And that makes them different. And I think the different clots require, in a way, uh, a different technique. You would like to have a technique that works for every clot, and that would be the best case scenario, but sometimes you have to adjust a little bit. And certainly there are clots that are more difficult than others. First of all, most of the clots we, we face today are what we call red clots, which is basically they consti they're constituted of red blood cells. And they are soft and they are fragile. And the problem with those clots is that they break. You try to grab it and it breaks and whoo, parts of it moves away into the distal vasculature. And doing so, of course, you have a, still have a stroke. You clean the vessel, but you still have obstruction further downstream. And that's the major problem, I would say. The second type of clot that we may face is quite the opposite. It's like a rubber, piece of rubber or a, a chewing gum. It's very, very sticky. It's hard to grab. And yeah, it just, it doesn't want to, to go with you. It just stays in place. So that's the second problem. And today, I would say with the devices we have, those late, those latter clots, the white ones, are more difficult than the reds. But the reds are more common. Now you're, you are working with a device that you think can approach these clots, is, is that true? I think the, the, the Embo trap that we used in the RISE-2 study, uh, it has features that makes it good, a good choice for both clots. For the red ones, the, the fragile red clots, it has uh, some features that are especially good, which is the closed end that can capture if you lose a little bit, a, a fraction but also the fact that it has kind of petals that traps the clot. So it sort of traps it and then keeps it in place. But those petals may also uh, uh, help you if you have a very rubbery, small white clot, because it can, with some luck, be captured inside and trapped and removed. So this is a good sort of uh, construct for both, uh, I would say. Is it different sizes or is it...? They're different sizes. The, the, the diameter is basically the same, mm -hmm. uh, but the length uh, vary. So nowadays we more and more use the longer version, the longer one. Because of those, uh, the possibility of uh, capturing... Uh... Because the clot may be long right. and then it makes sense to have a long uh, device, but also the fact that if the clot is here and you have to position the device, mm -hmm. If you have a short one, of course, positioning is more crucial. If you have a longer one, you have more uh, room for uh, not a perfect positioning. So it's easier to use, I would say. Now, you spoke, you mentioned very briefly Arise 2. Do you want yes. to explain to us what exactly that in, in entails? Arise 2 was a prospective study uh, that was done in the US and in Europe. 
It was 228 uh, patients uh, treated with this particular EmboTrap device uh, to uh, see if the, the device was uh, better or as good as the devices already on the market and also obviously to have it approved in the US. And what were the results? Are you starting to have results now? Yes, uh, it's been published in Stroke mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think the results were quite uh, impressive, especially what we call the first pass effect, which is the, f the possibility to remove the clot with only one attempt. And uh, that was possible in this study in more than 50% of the cases. So in, in more than half, the, half of the patients, only one attempt was needed. Was it a relatively easy learning curve for the operators? I would say so. It's, it's nothing magical. Uh, about it, uh, the using of this particular device. If you have used similar devices, you are basically uh, qualified to also use this one. Positioning with the early shorter uh, device was a little bit crucial. I think now it's better or easier with the longer one. Uh, but it's easy to use because I would say it's not depending so much on the, what we call the radial force, which is the when you open it up, a standard device is pushed itself into the clot and of course because of that it has to have some strength in order to be able to to be pushed this device this particular device instead of pushing itself into the clot it opens up and tries to capture it because of that it doesn't need to to be so strong and have this radial force which we think may be safer and also makes it very easy to use yeah. In terms of this first pass option, you have, you have many possibilities. Why would you choose or not choose a primary aspiration? Uh, I would never use uh, personally primary contact aspiration as my first choice. Uh, reason being that we have very good evidence for uh, stent retrievers, whereas the evidence so far for direct contact aspiration is not as convincing. Also, I think the risk is that you don't have a protection which means that you may lose fragments. Yes, you can clean the vessel where the original thrombus is, but you lose fragments because you don't have the protection, especially if you don't have what we call a balloon guide, which obstructs the flow more proximal. Uh, and I would say in most uh, studies that use primary aspiration, there is a significant number of patients where it doesn't work. So it may work in 60%, in 70%, and then for the rest to reach, let's say 90%, you throw in a stent retriever. And my question has always been, if that is the bailout and it's available, why don't you start with that? Why do you use it as a, as a, as a substitute when, it, when, when, this does, when the aspiration doesn't work? So I prefer to start with that. And uh, I think we have good reasons to do so. So what is your next step? Because now this trial, this, this Arise 2 is finished, are you developing a second? Uh, I think now it's also a question, okay, a study is a study. Uh, we have good experience in Stockholm at Karolinska and we have good experience in a real life setting, so to speak. But now I think the next step is to have a, a, a worldwide registry in which you collect the data from a huge number of centers and the clots from that, uh, from that particular uh, treatment. So you have a registry where you have data from the patients and you can analyze the clot in relation to those data to further sort of see seems, how it interacts. It seems, it seems interacts. very important to, to have that relationship between the device and the clot to understand how effective exactly. it is. Exactly, and so the clot, the patient data, and what happened, how did it go? How, what, what was the result of the attempt? So is there a, a, a kind of take-home message for your fellow neurologists and interventional neuroradiologists about where we're going with this and what we know about POTS? And... I, I think the one take-home message could be that go for first pass effect, one pass, maybe two, and also uh, do not be satisfied with a 50% reperfusion. It should be complete. It shouldn't be that you clean the vessel where the clot was, but you lose a lot of fragments to the distal. It should be almost perfectly normal 
and that will be reflected in a better outcome for the patients so they can return to work, they can live a normal life just like they did before without any, any problems basically. I think that's the good, good message. Well, thank you very much for sharing that with us.